A ratio spread is normally implemented for a credit. We want positive theta, negative gamma. That's the gamma that works against us. Therefore, an increase in volatility would have a negative impact on the strategy and a decrease in volatility, a positive impact. So we want to make sure that we have a fairly good understanding of the position that we're going to create by doing a little bit of uh, analysis of the stocks that we're picking or the stock that we're picking. The first example that we're going to use today is going to be the call ratio spread. We're going to use Amgen, it's trading around 5407. Uh, it has the dollar weighted put call ratio of 0.66. So, you know, not really very bullish, uh, but not really very bearish. Kind of a little bit in the middle. January expiry, we're talking 39 days. So by buying one, selling two, we are going to collect 35 cents for this one by two ratio spread. Now when you think of the, the delta of the long one call, short two calls, it's going to be a negative 0.17. Obviously by being long a positive one times 47, the long call, and then adding to that the negative two that we sell at a 0.32, we come up with a 0.17 negative delta. So that itself shows that we're leaning in this particular example a little bit short. Stocks are around 54 and 7, near the strike of 55. What are we looking for? Well, to achieve our success, we need the stock to make a very slow and gradual move upward. Uh, at 60.35 at expiration in January, 39 days going forward, uh, this spread at the prices that we put on here, 205 and 120, would be a break even. The scenario we're looking for is a slow creep from 54.07 to 57.5. Notice that 57.5 happens to be the strike that we're short on the two calls. So what happens at that price range is that 55 call, which we bought at 205, has then got a value of 255, 250. Well, that would give us a profit in this example. Uh, I put, what did I put there? I put 55 cents, but it's actually 45 cents. So let's correct that while we're here. 45 cents, the difference between the 205 and the 250. And the GM 57 half call has a zero value, okay? So at that point, we are going to collect that dollar twenty times two for two forty, okay? In our total example, you know, we would pick up at seven and a half uh, at expiry two dollars and eighty five cents on this spread. Now on the downside, uh, since we are doing a call ratio spread to the upside, where we are short more than we're long, uh, anything on the downside, what we're going to capture is just that thirty five cent credit. Here's Amgen. Uh, what we're doing is we're looking to trade the uh, calls. I got them priced at 205 here. We bought them a little earlier than the 207.14 market. So we're long them at 205 and we sold them at 120. So as I talked about, there's our, uh, our theta, roughly about $2.50 that we're bringing in. Okay, all the deltas, uh, your other Greeks are there. But what I wanted to bring up from this position is let's look at the plot. All right, so we talked about we are long one and short two. So obviously, the blue line is indicative of the movement of the stock uh, in real time. Uh, as the stock goes up, obviously, we are starting to lose money on the upside because why? We are short at the 57 and a half strike. So if you notice, when we get near 57 and a half, which is right here, we're starting to lose money. And that is because we are unequal in our long story short where we are short one extra. So you can see by the blue line, if this was to happen in any given day during the day, as the stock continues to rise, we continue to lose because we're obviously short one call, which means we have deltas working against us and gamma working against us. Now, if you look to the downside, you can see we sold it for a 35 cent credit, so we're always going to uh, achieve that credit going uh, to the downside, no matter how low the stock goes, because we are long one call, short two, we have no risk to the downside. We're going to collect and capture the 35 cents, which is exactly what this gray, the green line, the line line is showing you. If you see, no matter what price stock is on the downside, we're going to capture this 35.45, uh, 35 dollars and 45 cents on the downside all the way through. And the line line obviously represents that expiration. So because we sold one, bought one and sold two, look at this exact scenario. Scenario we talked about. We are going to gain our most right around 57.5, which is the strike price 
of the higher strike call. Right there, we're going to get about a $208 profit for this one by two spread. Now, what happens if uh, expiration happens to be the stock much higher? Well, you can see anywhere beyond uh, a level of uh, past the 57 and a half, we start getting short, but we don't start to lose money until right here. Okay, we start to lose a little bit of money at 6042, and if you remember what we showed on our slide, uh, we had a break-even point of right around here. So you can see that we've still managed to make some money as the stock's going up, but when it gets to a level beyond to where the the gamma and the delta starts to kick in of that extra call that we're short, then we start to lose money, just as if you could see on the blue line, which is not an expiry line, but it is a daily line. So what we're trying to capture is obviously the top of the TP. Uh, it looks like a TP because we're talking about expiration. Uh, if you look at the curve here, it's a little bit like a bell curve, but not so much because we don't have any downside risk because we're just doing a ratio, one by two. Uh, when you sell a straddle or you sell a strangle, if you recall, this blue line looks very much like a bell curve because we had risk both up and down. So what is our risk here? Well, we know where our risk is with price, but we also want to be very clear that uh, what happens if volatility changes. Well, let's move volatility up to 50, which is a 25% increase, and see what happens. Well, what should happen is our little blue line, uh, which is the only line that's going to be active here because expiry is expiry, is going to move to the downside because now we have more risk. So you can see the blue line has gone to the downside because volatility has gone up, and we lose money because we're short more than we are long. And uh, that, that happens to be the problem when you're in these situations where you have an un equal number of longs to your shorts. Okay, this is Amgen uh, monthly, uh, <clears throat> weekly and daily. You'll see how the wall has been coming down as measured by the distance between the uh, plus two sigma and minus two sigma. As gets, this is getting tighter. If you visually keep an eye on it, you'll see we're, we've been trading in a fairly tight range from a you know, multi-year point of view. If we step in closer and look at weekly, you'll see that uh, we've been trading in a 10-point range, about 50, or maybe even uh, less than that. But more, you know, let's say last six months, there's been a 10-point range. Last uh, month or so, uh, last couple of months, we'll be in a range of about uh, oh, six points. Okay, So 10 points from back there and six points here. So the ball is getting less and less. Um, we have parallel sigma lines. That's typically is not a growth company. It's a sideways company because of how the price action is. Um, and you also see it in CI. Confirmation of that that you see in the, in the CI that uh, uh, the CI is flat. You see that there? And here you have it weekly, daily, monthly. There's pretty much CI is flat. So there's no momentum up or down. 